Ladies and gentlemen, dear participants, it's a great pleasure for me to see you all in such a in such a short distance in real life, not just in video conferences. And dear to you back home on your screens. I think this is a very good time to come together to talk about and to share our visions and, and ideas about HPC. And thanks, Laurent. I think this was perfect, as you said, that we have even the label of the French uh, presidency of the Union. Dear Praise, thank you so much. It's also Praise Days and it's your HPC and that we joined together. I think this was a very good idea. But if I remember well, uh, uh, Serge, it's the first time that we real, uh, bring this together in real life, not just in a, in a, in a, in a virtual way. So this is also something which is very, very new. It's my pleasure to speak to you in Paris while France holds the presidency of the Council of the European Union. And I'm absolutely delighted to see you so many in person again. Before I look ahead, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to briefly look back on a journey we started to gather leadership in high-performance computing. The Declaration of Rome is just in 2017, it's four years ago. It marked the beginning of a much stronger cooperation of European member states and the Union. Consequently, in 2018, the RUHPC joint undertaking was established by the European Council, just within one year. That's incredible. Thank you so much to all of the supporters and to the, com uh, and to the Commission. A joint undertaking is a powerful instrument foreseen in the Treaty of the Functioning of the European Union. We, the Member States, many partner countries, the Union align our strategies and pool our resources jointly with industry. EuroHPC swiftly became operational with strong support of the European Commission, quickly developed into the focal point of European activities in high-performance computing. And our joint undertaking delivered already. You heard that in the speech of Thomas. Several petascale and pre-exascale supercomputers all over, all over Europe are being installed or already operational. A European network of competence centers spans all participating states. And this was possible so quick because of praise, of course, and thank you for that, because we had already a very good landscape for that. Ambitious research and innovation projects, as Thomas mentioned already, drive the development of high-performance high computing technologies. And now we have the EURHPC new mission. It became clear that for the new period of the European financial framework, EURHPC had to play an even bigger role. The Commission proposed a new regulation that was adopted in Council last year. With that new Council regulation, the EURHPC mission became even broader, and I paraphrase, to develop a world-leading, federated, secure, and hyper-connected supercomputing, quantum computing, and data infrastructure ecosystem to support the development of innovative and competitive supercomputing systems and a wide range of applications. And to widen the use of the large number of public and private users and support the development of key skills of European science and industry. Here you see already the three pillars Thomas also had in his speech. We had the technology, we had the procurement, and of course we have the usage, which is very, very important with all the sub-points. Enough for looking back. I would like now to look at the future European computing infrastructure. What are the challenges that lay bef lie before us? Let me present three points. Computing infrastructure will be even more powerful. Theory one. Computing infrastructure will be more diverse. Point two. 
and computing infrastructure contribute to a resilient and sovereign Europe. Point three. More power. It is my firm belief that computing power will still increase in the coming decade. There is still room for Moore's law in microelectronics, more Moore. The industry roadmap is set for ever small node sized. And Europe is not a bad position. It's not in a bad position. We have research powerhouses like CLAT, IMAC, and Fraunhofer, to name just a few. We will increase chip manufacturing in Europe by strengthening our own companies and by welcoming global players like just announced Intel. To facilitate innovation in chips, the Commission proposed the European Chip Act. We will have a whole session in the afternoon about that. The chips undertake, joint undertaking play a pivotal role in the CHIP Act and EuroHPC is ready to cooperate. An increasing portion of power will come from software. We should not forget that. New algorithms enable leaps in efficiency, as well as better software and optimized use of hardware. Because energy to solution is key for every HPC center. EuroHPC will have to tackle both hardware and software to deliver. More diversity. That's my second point. Users of computing infrastructures have one key metric, time to solution. Having more raw power available, as I mentioned, is only one aspect in this play. A better time to solution is achievable also through new computing technologies beyond Moore. Quantum computing was one of the points. It will play a crucial role in future of computing. We will hear more about in tomorrow's session. Another example is non von Neumann computing. It could help overcoming the memory wall that many data-rich problems face. These new paradigms enable complete new algorithms and they will shorten time to solution at least for certain applications. Thus, the diversity in hardware we see today, CPUs, GPUs, FPGAs, will increase. With it, its complexity of workflows will increase too. That will be our challenge here. These workflows will in the future not be on HPC alone. Workflows will span the whole computing continuum. For example, from age computing near sensors and data crunching to large-scale simulations. For example, data analytics, analytics and usage of EOC's resources combined with high-performance modeling. Not only the system, but the users will be more diverse as well. New scientific and industrial communities will use HPC. Allow me a little bit side note. Also, the workforce itself needs to be more diverse. A number of female engineers and IT specialists must increase. Is this the task of your, what is the task of your HPC here? It needs to embrace and shape this diversity, think out of the box and pave new paths. It needs to cooperate more with other parts of ecosystem like Euro, Euro, European Open Science Cloud and European data spaces. My last point, sovereign Europe. Computing infrastructure contributes to a resilient and sovereign Europe. I am very strong convinced on that. Being sovereign in the digital realm is essential to our strat strategic autonomy. And our computing infrastructure in Europe is an integral part of our digital sovereignty. The COVID-19 pandemic and the Russian invasion in the Ukraine have shown us that Europe needs more to be more resilient. What does this mean for computing technologies in Europe? We must be able to understand, to develop, to manufacture, and to use them. This does not mean we need to do everything alone. Of course, we need to stay open, open to the world. And this is a fine line, and EuroHPC needs to find it. These are the challenges we faced, ladies and gentlemen. Let me summarize how EuroHPC can contribute. 
EuroHPC needs to deliver more power, better time to solution, and better energy to solution. EuroHPC needs to embrace diversity of computing applications and uses. And EuroHPC needs to define what digital sovereignty means in practice. EuroHPC is up to deliver. The key to that, EuroHPC aligning participating states, the union, and the industry. Now is time to do that, the time to shape the course of EuroHPC and the European digital ecosystem. Let's go to work and many success for the next days. Thank you so much.